Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I've got another code challenge for you guys. It's on leak code this time. And yeah, this is another easy problem. It's a little tricky if you don't know what a linked list is. So make sure that before you begin this problem, you read about linked lists and how they work on a basic level. So the way this works is I'm going to um, introduce the problem to you, explain what is needed to satisfy it. And then you can pause the video, try it out on your own, see if you can complete it on your own and come up with your own solution. And then come back and I'll show you my solution and then I'll show you two more solutions and uh, one of them being the most optimal solution. And it's gonna blow your mind. Like when I saw the, the optimal solution, it's freaking crazy, <laughs> this is really cool. Um, but yeah, um, you can skip around if you want to, you can skip around to the different solutions um, if you want to. Uh, but I do recommend you try this out on your own just to test your skills and get practice and stuff like that. And yeah, let's get started. So it's called middle of the linked list. So the idea is you are given the head of a singly linked list, return the middle node of the linked list. If there are two middle nodes, return the second middle node, all right? So the head of a linked list is simply saying the first element of a linked list, that's all that means. And so um, in a linked list, each node of the linked list will have a pointer to the next node in the linked list, okay? The thing with the linked list is that you have to traverse it one by one. You can't skip around unless you like you store um, the pointers and, and different variables and stuff like that. But generally speaking, to traverse a linked list, you have to traverse it one by one. So the time complexity is a little tricky in that case. But um, yeah, so you're gonna get you're gonna get the head, and then you're going to traverse the linked list and return the middle elements of or the middle node of the linked list. Okay. And like I said, if the if there's two middle nodes, so in this case, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's two middle nodes here because it's a even number. So just return the one on the right. If it's an odd number, meaning that there is one middle node, just return that one, okay? And that's pretty much it. So try pausing the video now, solve it on your own, and then come back and let's see how we can, different ways we can solve this thing, okay? So the approach that I'm gonna take is, what I'm gonna do is first we need to figure out what the middle element is, right? So in a way we can do that is by traversing the entire list so that we can get the size of it and then divide the size by two to get the middle index. And then we'll traverse it again from the beginning to get back to the middle index and then return that middle um, middle node rather. So the whole idea is that we're gonna scout it out, get collect data on it, and then we're going to use that data to figure out where we need to traverse to. And this is just a uh, singly linked list, so this means that you cannot go backwards, you can only go forwards. So we need to keep track of what the head of the linked list is. In this case, that's what's passed in, of course, right? So anyway, let's try this out. So this will always be one just because, you know, there's always gonna be one element, but I'll just keep it like that anyway, just uh, to have it clearly there. Um, so yeah, it's, for the constraints, it says the number of nodes in the list is the range one to 100. So it'll always be one at least. And also each of the values will always be between one and 100 inclusive. So it can be one or 100 as well. Um, but yeah, so now let's traverse the list. So to traverse the list, um, you can use a simple while loop if you want to. And before we do that, we're gonna copy the head into a new variable. So list node current is equal to head because once we traverse this variable here, like I said, there's no way to go back. So we're just gonna copy that into a new variable so that we can just traverse through this one, but we'll always maintain what the head is so that we can re-traverse it later on when we calculate the index of the, of the middle element or the number of iterations to get to the middle element. So now we can say while current dot next is not equal to null. Then we're going to do current is equal to current dot next but we'll also do back plus plus. So back again, it's just keeping track of the amount of elements inside of the, of the linked list, okay? So at this point, we should have now front is equal to one and then back is equal to, in this case, five for this example here. So how do we calculate the middle position? So in this case, there's five elements. So five divided by two is 2.5 and that's gonna round down to two because an integer cannot hold decimal values. So it'll truncate that off. And so you'll just have two, so then we'll do two plus one. So then we can just generalize it and say that for any um, linked list that has a odd amount of elements, then we can just divide that by two and then add one onto that to get the middle element, okay? And then if you have a even amount of elements, in this case we have six, you can do six divided by two, that'll give you three, and then we still need to add one, so plus one to get four, because like it said up here, if there's two middle elements, in this case it's three and four, we want the right one, so just add one onto that, okay? So six divided by two is, uh, six divided by two is three, and then plus one is four, so that's the fourth uh, position. 
And uh, yeah, so in this case, we can just do integer middle is equal to um, back divided by two plus one. So we can always just do plus one and that'll work for both cases, even if it's even or odd. So that's pretty cool. So now with that information, we know the position of the middle node that we need to return, okay? So we can just traverse it again, like I said, and return whenever we reach that position. So we're going to copy, we're going to reset current to the head again so that we can restart at that beginning position. And then we'll do a simple for loop forever, for however many operations we need. So for, so for integer i is equal to one, because we're already at one, that's the first um, element in this case. And then i is less than middle. And then i plus plus. And so for each iteration of this loop, we're just going to uh, traverse by one. So current is equal to current dot next. All right, so then at the very end here, current should now hold a reference to the node that we want, in this case, the middle one. So we'll just return current. All right, and let's run this code here. That's correct, now let's submit it to so do all the other 100 test cases. And look at this, so we get zero MS runtime and that's faster than 100% of Java online submissions of the linked list, which is crazy, right? That's a really optimal solution. So this is a very good one, but there's another one that's way more concise than this one that will blow your mind. I'll show you in a second, but let me just recap this real quick. So just recap this real quick. So front, we don't even need, that was just to illustrate that it starts at the first position. It's not gonna be zero based in this case, but we can do it as zero base. Um, and then back is the, essentially this will keep track of how many elements there are. So we're going to copy the head position, the head variable into a new variable so that we can start at the beginning. And then we're gonna traverse that with a while loop until we reach the very end because eventually current.next will be null, meaning that you have reached the end of the list. So while it's not null, we're going to do back plus plus because we have found a new element in the linked list. And then we're going to assign current to the next node. And we're just going to repeat that process until we reach the end. Eventually we'll have backs and eventually back will contain the total amount of elements in the linked list. And then from there, we can use that to calculate the middle position. So middle is going to be equal to the back divided by two plus one. That'll give you essentially how many times you need to traverse through the linked list again to get to the middle element essentially. And that's what that's doing here. So the, so we're first, so first we reset the current back to the, the first position, which is the head of the linked list. And then we're using this for loop here to iterate however many times we need. And then after we traverse it, we're just gonna return current, which will be the middle element in this case, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. You really, you can't avoid having to traverse a linked list um, because like I said, in a linked list, you can't skip around or do anything like that. The same things you can do with an array. Um, it's a little different. So you have to tra first traverse it to understand what the data is like. In this case, we're using that to calculate how many different elements there are. And then we'll calculate what the middle index is or the middle position. And then we're gonna traverse it and then we have the middle, okay? Pretty simple, I think. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the other approaches for this problem. There's two of them. The second one is really cool. Um, so the first one is to output the values of the linked list into an array. Because once you have it into an array, an array is a easier data structure to work with, right? So then you can just, uh, easily grab the middle element because you can skip around an array, right? Because the memory locations, the, mem the values of an array are contiguous in memory, so you can easily skip around in an array. So it says put every node into an array A in order. So you're gonna traverse the linked list and every time you traverse it, you're going to add that value to an array. And then once you have that array of all the different values of the linked list, you can use A and then the index will be A.link divided by two. And there you go, then you have the, uh, then you have the middle index essentially and then you can return that. So that's another way to do it. Pretty cool, pretty smart. Uh, the only problem with this is that the space complexity is big O of n because, because as the size of the input, the linked list grows, the size of your array grows as well. So in this case, it's a very optimal approach in terms of time complexity, but for space complexity, because we're using an outside data structure, which is, which is an array, um, it's less efficient in, in terms of space complexity, okay? But here's approach two, which is really cool. So this one's called fast and slow pointer. So when traversing the list with a pointer slow, make another pointer fast that traverses twice as fast. When fast reaches the end of the list, slow must be in the middle. So I was like, what, what the hell does that mean? How do you do fast and slow? So the way that this works is you're gonna be traversing the list just like I did in my solution, except that the slow pointer will traverse it one by one, but the fast pointer will traverse it um, by twos. So the fast pointer will be moving twice as fast as the slow pointer, 
So by the time the fast pointer reaches the end of the linked list, the slow pointer will be at the middle index. It's freaking genius. It's freaking genius because if something travels twice as fast as the, as the other thing, then by the time you reach the end, the other thing will be at the middle. They said approach to opens a new door to my mind, LOL. That just, that's funny. So there you go. That's how you can solve the uh, middle of the linked list problem. Hopefully you solved it yourself. Of course, I'll be leaving a link to this uh, leak code problem in the description below so you can check it out. I um, forgot to mention that before. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.